In this video, we're going to talk about a tool that helps you prevent Kubernetes misconfigurations from reaching production. And the tool is called the tree. Let's say that your company has multiple project teams where developers are deploying their applications to Kubernetes. A DevOps engineer who is managing the Kubernetes clusters in the company wants every project team to follow certain rules and write Kubernetes configuration files which follow the best practices. This way, they want to prevent any misconfigurations or security issues from ending up in the cluster when the applications are deployed. So to avoid this, the Kubernetes administrators will screen the configuration regularly and check for any misconfigurations or security issues. Many developers are not Kubernetes experts, so very often, they end up creating manifests that do not follow the best practices. What are the examples of these best practices, you may be asking? Well, this could be specifying a version on every image used in the pod, instead of the latest tag, which is a common mistake in configuration files. Or sometimes developers would just copy and paste the Kubernetes configuration files for a certain application from internet without a proper check whether there are any security issues in this configuration or not. For example, running a container with root privilege or using deprecated Kubernetes APIs for the components are some of the bad practice examples. So after the Kubernetes administrators detect the issues in the configuration, they would notify the teams about the issues which they need to fix. And this needs to be done for all the clusters across the company. Sometimes the teams may not prioritize the issues or delay the fixes. But also, if this validation process is not automated, the admins may miss something and the misconfigurations and security issues may actually end up all the way in the production. So the question is, how can Kubernetes administrators delegate Kubernetes responsibilities to developers without losing control. So basically letting them still create those manifests themselves, but making sure any configuration that ends up in the cluster is correct and follows the best practice rules that administrators want. Well, that's exactly the problem the tree solves. So what is the tree and how does it solve this problem? It's actually very simple. The tree lets the Kubernetes administrators create policies and best practices they want every team to follow and then run these policies as automated checks as part of the CI CD pipeline or even earlier in the development workflow as a pre-commit hook, for example. This moves the configuration checks to the left, preventing them from ending up in the cluster but also letting developers fix them right away without the need of back and forth communication from Kubernetes admins explaining developers why and what needs to be fixed. So the tree is a command line tool which you can install with a single command, which means you can install it on any machine and integrate it into any tool and trigger it whenever you want, like every time developers commit changes or create a pull request or merge a pull request, etc. So basically, Kubernetes admins who actually know Kubernetes and how to properly configure Kubernetes components will create policies with all the rules and best practices once, then integrate them in all the team's development workflows, and this way make the company-wide consistent policies that all the projects will use. And to integrate it into multiple CI CD pipelines, you actually don't have to copy and paste the policies and include them in every project. These policies are stored centrally in the tree and not in the project as additional project file. So you can reference this central policy and use them in all the CI CD pipelines. Also, in addition to you being able to create policies, the tree already gives you a list of built-in policies, which covers all the Kubernetes best practices of configuration. And this means once you set it up, you can already start validating your Kubernetes YAML files with these built-in policies. Now, in addition to Kubernetes manifests files, 
many people use Helm charts to create components in Kubernetes. In this case, along with the Kubernetes YAML files, you will want to check the configuration files inside your Helm charts, right? Well, the tree also has a Helm plugin, which you can use to check any misconfigurations inside your Helm charts. And now we're going to see how to easily set up the tree and start validating our Kubernetes configuration files right away. So let's jump into the demo. First, we install the tree locally with one single command, which you can either grab on their official page or in the getting started documentation as well. So just copying the curl command. This will install the tree locally. Once we have the tree installed, we can actually already start validating our Kubernetes configuration files. So I'm in a project where I have one configuration file that basically just creates an Nginx deployment and a service to that deployment. So a very simple Kubernetes YAML file that I want to validate. And to do that, I can just execute the tree, test, and the name of the file. The tree will validate the Kubernetes configuration file for the YAML format, for the Kubernetes schema, and finally, all the policies, the built-in policies that the tree provides you with based on the best practices of Kubernetes configuration. And it actually detected that we have five issues in our configuration file. And for each issue, it also gives you a detailed explanation what that issue is and why it's failing. So in our case, we're missing a readiness and liveness probes on our container. We haven't specified an image version here. We also just have one replica. And we're exposing a node port through the service. And these are all issues that are against Kubernetes configuration best practices. So all this needs to be fixed. But we actually have more than that. We have a link here to the tree UI. So if I copy this, we can log into the tree with a GitHub account. And in my account here, which is now automatically connected to this command line execution, I actually have a list of the built-in rules configured for my account. And for each rule, you have a toggle that lets you enable or disable that rule. So for example, we decide, you know what, we don't need to do any liveness and readiness probes for our deployments. So we're going to disable this. So now if I run the check again, we see that those two are not marked as issues anymore. We can also change the text of the message that is displayed in the issue whenever the policy is violated. So this will be additional information for the developers whenever they violate this policy. So let's say incorrect value for key replicas. In our projects, we always use at least three replicas. And now if I run the test again, we have the changed message here. Also for each policy, you can actually get more information to really understand why this is a violation and why does it not follow the best practice. So for example, if you want to find out more about this issue here, clicking on this information icon, this will show you a page where the policy is explained that exposing a node port is less secure and forces you to create a necessary coupling between services. And for each policy, it also shows you how to fix that. In most cases, with an example of the YAML code itself. So you don't need to search on internet to understand the policy and also find the fix. You basically have it all in one place. So in our case, let's actually fix our issues. Here we need to use a different type for a node port. And let's use a load balancer. Let's also fixate the image version to 1.21 and increase the replicas to three. And run the check again. And this shows that we have no 
violations in our Kubernetes configuration file. Now we ran the tree check a couple of times before the fixes and after the fixes. I can actually see that history also in the tree UI in the history tab. This is especially important if you use the same policies account for multiple pipelines. In this case, you will have all these invocations from different sources in one place right here so that you can see that the tool is used properly in your organization. On the left, you have the list of invocations. And if you click in one, you will see the details of that invocation. Now, going back to the terminal, as you see here, it also checks the Kubernetes schema validation, which means if I misspell an attribute name like container port, for example, it will catch that error as well and give me an error that container port is required and that property container port with lowercase p is not allowed. And same thing if I forget to use a required attribute like kind, for example. Now, as you know, Kubernetes has different versions and different versions may have different attributes or different API versions here. In the tree, you can actually fixate or specify which Kubernetes version you want to use to check those policies. And you can do that in settings, default server version, and you can choose the Kubernetes version right here. And now it will validate the schema against this Kubernetes version. So as you see, the tree is super easy to install and configure anywhere you want, whether you want to run validations locally on a development machine or integrate it into your CI CD pipeline. And you can actually get started with the tree for free. And finally, if you want to try it out, it actually has a great documentation, which you can use when setting it up and configuring it in different environments. That was an overview of another great DevOps tool for Kubernetes. So let me know in the comments what you think about the tool or if you already have any experience with it. With that, thank you for watching and see you in the next video.